Hello my dudes, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and we're gonna build a speaker together. Yep, we're gonna go through the whole process of designing and building a speaker, starting with this video, step one, the plan. We're gonna make some decisions today. But first, I wanna let you guys know that I have a whole new website. Uh, it's called kmakits.com. It has all my old build plans and build kits on there, plus some new stuff. But I want this website to be more than just a place to buy uh, kits and plans. I want it to be an extension of the information you get on my YouTube channel, Speaker Building. Um, so I'm gonna do that by starting a blog, and it starts today with this video on the website. So as an extension to this video, there's also gonna be a downloadable worksheet just in case you're following along and you're making your own speaker through this series, it's gonna help you out with this first step and I'll probably have sheets for the rest of the steps. Um, so that's kmakits.com. I'll have a link down there and up there, I don't know. Uh, but thanks, go, go look at it. Go check it out, it's cool. It looks good, I made it myself. Okay, so let's back up for a moment. This is the beginning of a new series of videos I'm gonna be doing, taking you guys through my design process of speaker building. My plan is to do a number of these series all on different projects so you guys can see that the process stays relatively the same while it can adapt to different projects. I also think the best way to learn how to build speakers is to watch someone actually go through the process of building a particular speaker and it, it makes it even easier when uh, you see that same process done through you know, different projects, like different styles of speakers. Um, so I think this is gonna be good. I, I think this is the best way to get the most people uh, the information they need to build their own speakers. So the project for this series is going to be a new kit I'm developing for Parts Express. Um, once it's done, you'll be able to go on Parts Express and buy the kit yourself, which is gonna be kind of cool. You'll see how the whole thing came to be. It doesn't really have a name yet. I'm just calling it PE kit or a Parts Express kit, um, but hopefully by the time this series is done, we'll come up with a name. Maybe you guys can help me out with a name. That would be fun. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. So the first step in designing anything, really, is to come up with a plan. Um, there's a series of questions that we need to go through so we can effectively move forward through the steps in this project. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is what is the speaker going to be used for? Some example answers to this question could be uh, home theater speakers, uh, casual living room listening speakers, critical listening, music listening speakers. It could be a combination of home theater and music listening speakers. It could be a portable, like outdoor, casual music listening speakers. So getting as specific as possible in this step helps. So figure out what you're gonna be using your speaker for. The speakers we're working on here are gonna be for kind of casual kickback living room listening situations. Uh, so I'm gonna write down casual listening. So the second question we need to ask ourselves that kind of leads off the first is where we're gonna be listening to these speakers. Are we gonna listen in the living room, uh, in a bedroom, on a desk? Uh, outside for a portable system. The speakers we're designing here, I want them to be mostly used in living room listening situations. Um, so I'm gonna write down uh, medium to small size rooms, um, but I also want them to be okay if you wanna put them on a desk. So uh, this is gonna be more of a generalized uh, speaker build. It is good, it is better to be as specific as possible here, just like with all this stuff. Uh, it makes it easier down the line, but uh, a little wiggle room here is okay too. So I'm gonna write down general. Okay, so we're gonna use the answers from the previous two questions to come up with some constraints and goals for our project. Um, Hopefully you've been, probably, if you're like me, you've been thinking about this project for a while, so you probably have an idea of some goals, um, but let's get them down on paper. All right, let's start with constraints. Uh, one of my biggest constraints for this project is going to be budget. Um, it's probably gonna be a big constraint for most projects. Um, unless money is no object, then you can just go crazy. Uh, budget's probably gonna be on pretty much everybody's constraints list. Uh, next we have, I, I, I need to be using date and audio components for this kit build. Another constraint, I, I, I want this project to be unique. Um, a straight up 
uh, two-way tweeter woofer situation isn't gonna work best for this kit. So it also needs to be a two-channel stereo system and the enclosure can't be huge. So uh, it needs to be a smallish enclosure, enclosure size. All right, let's talk about constraints for a second. Some people might think of constraints as a bad thing. I'm in the camp that thinks that uh, constraints is the catalyst for creativity. Um, limiting your ability to do whatever you want to do is going to make a better product in the end. Um, having a wide open landscape of possibilities, it, it kind of paralyzes you because you don't know which direction to go. There's so many directions. So the more constraints you have and the more detailed those constraints are, the better you're going to be. So go wild on the constraints. You can always pair them back too. Yeah, so don't worry about that. All right, now goals. Goals is super easy. What, what do you want your speakers to be? You just dream it and write it down. Uh, my goals, I want it to have at least a 50 hertz low end. Um, I also want, this is part of the uniqueness in our constraints, I want it to have two woofers per channel. Uh, I want the front baffle to be thin, relatively thin. It's gonna be like a pencil kind of design. Uh, and I also want the construction, since this is going to be a kit kind of for, you know, mass market kind of people, I want it to be as, as simple uh, construction of the enclosure as possible. So it can't be too wonky in design. Unique, not wonky. I, I don't know, we'll figure it out. So this is all great information that we're gonna have to be referencing throughout the rest of this design process. But there are two questions we need to answer right now. Um, and that is enclosure type and crossover type. These two decisions don't necessarily have to be final right now in this moment. You can make a decision right now, uh, see how it works later on down the line, if it doesn't work, you can come back, make a new decision, and move forward with that again. This is kind of an iterative process, and uh, but we need to start somewhere. So we're gonna start here. And we can actually use our constraints and goals to narrow down our decisions right away. All right, let's start with enclosure type. I actually have a video I made like a year ago or two years ago on selecting enclosure types. You can check it out right up here, or I'll link it down in the description. You can see how I've changed over time. I think I had long hair or something like that. Go watch it, it's fun. Um, but the main enclosure types that you're gonna be deciding between are sealed, ported, and passive radiator. All right, so let's just whittle away at these. We're gonna start with sealed. Looking at a constraints list, uh, sealed actually works really well uh, because a sealed enclosure doesn't need a port. And no port means less components, which helps with our budget. It also helps uh, by simplifying our construction in the same way, there's no extra parts. But since uh, sealed enclosures don't have the extended base range that a ported or passive radiator enclosure has, um, it, it's probably not gonna work for our situation. Now a passive radiator is a great choice when uh, enclosure size is limited. Um, it's also good for uniqueness. You don't really see a lot of passive radiators on kits. Um, but some negatives are it definitely increases your uh, component cost. Um, passive radiators aren't cheap. Um, there's also a negative that uh, it, it slightly increases the complexity of uh, construction. But it's a good, it's a actually a really good contender. A ported enclosure would be a good choice for this project uh, in that ports are usually pretty cheap, so we're good on budget, easy to install. Um, the only problem with ports is that you usually need a relatively large enclosure. Um, to fit the actual tube in the enclosure. Especially if you're using smaller drivers and you want to get extended base range, the tubes are usually pretty long. Um, so that's a negative. So this is where your project priorities come into play. And those are usually personal to you and your project. Um, in this project, I think I'm going to go with either a passive radiator or ported. Um, I need to run the numbers and see, but that's in a future step. Um, I don't think giving up the extended base range is going to be worth it with the sealed enclosure. Um, so with this one, I'm going to pick probably a ported, but a passive radiator if I can fit it in my budget. All right, now let's talk about crossover types. I also have a video on selecting crossovers. Um, 
Clash Over types. It's a very skim the surface on the types of crossovers. Um, you can check that out right up or down in the description. Um, but the most common, well, not most common, uh, a few types of crossovers are one way or a point source, two way, 2.5 way, three way, with the most common by far being either a one way or a two way. So the different ways, the crossover ways, one way, two way, three way, uh, that refers to how many times the uh, audio frequency spectrum is split by the crossover. So in a one way, it's not split at all. It's just one way down the center. The full spectrum goes to one speaker or multiple speakers. Um, two way, uh, the audio spectrum split twice. No, split once into two. Uh, Frequency ranges, the highs go to the tweeter, the lows go to the woofer. That's a quick explanation. <laughs> so this is actually a really easy choice for me. I'm gonna be doing a two-way crossover, uh, so I'll be adding a tweeter to this project. All right, so that's it for step one. Um, just make a plan. Head over to kmakits.com. There's a worksheet on there that goes through all the steps, everything that we just talked about today, um, so you can apply it to whatever project you're working on right now. In the next video, step two, Two, we're going to be talking about selecting drivers. Uh, and we're going to select some drivers for this kit. Uh, that's going to be a fun video. I'm not sure when it's going to come out. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to come out next week. I'm going to be trying, I'm going to try really hard this summer to get videos out every week. At least uh, more than I have been recently. Um, it's going to be a push and I'm excited. It's going to be fun. And we're, we're building speakers together. It's going to be cool. I want this like collaborative process. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Here you guys' feedback. Speaking of feedback, I want your feedback about my new website, kmakits.com. Uh, there's build plans, build kits on there, even free build plans. Go check those out. I have a Patreon where fans like you help me keep making videos like this. I appreciate you guys. And you can see all the fun behind the scenes stuff I do around the shop and, uh, and everywhere um, on Instagram at Kirby Meets Audio. Links are all down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are awesome. Appreciate you. I'm gonna be doing more this summer. More of this. More of this. It's gonna be good. Okay. All right. I'm done. Thanks again. Oh, oh, what's coming? What's coming? Go to the website and keep going back because updates. And Instagram updates. It's coming. A bunch are coming. All right. See you guys. Bye.